Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Sunday, mother, community member, and the developmental psychologist. I'd like to welcome you to the Mental Health Story Times, sponsored by Vital Village in the Boston Public Library. We developed the Mental Health Story Times to engage with parents, caregivers, and children to help support strong and positive mental health and strong social skill development. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this story time. We do hope we can see you again at another story time. And please do let us know if we have, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments. Thanks, enjoy. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the children's librarian at the Adams Street branch. Hello, I'm Rishé. I'm the Children's Librarian at the Lower Mills Branch. <laughs> and we are going to be uh, doing a story time for you guys today about... Appreciating diversity, especially during the winter season. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different ways that people celebrate, a lot of holidays, and a lot of non-holidays. And some people might not be celebrating at all. And we want to appreciate all of those things. So we're going to read some awesome stories together and sing some fun songs. And thank you so much for joining us. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome friends, we're glad you came to play. Welcome friends. Welcome friends, welcome friends, we're glad you came to play. Alrighty, so now we are going to get ready to sing our next song. You've probably noticed that it's gotten a little bit chilly outside and maybe it's even snowed a little bit. Sometimes when I see snow, I get so happy because I know that I'm going to be able to go outside and play in the snow with my dog Leo. And sometimes, usually by the end of the winter, I get a little bit sad when it snows because I'm ready for the sun and for everything to turn green again. So we are going to sing a song about how we feel when it snows. All right, here we go. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. Oh, it's fluffy and it's white, such a lovely snowy sight. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. All right, so now we're going to sing about being sad when it snows. Here we go. If you're sad when it snows, dry your eyes. If you're sad when it snows, dry your eyes. All the wet and all the cold starts to get a little old. If you're sad when it snows, dry your eyes. Alrighty, how about when you get so excited, maybe it's snowing and it's the first snowfall of the year and you're ready to go out there and have a snowball fight. Here we go. If you're excited when it snows, wave your arms. If you're excited when it snows, wave your arms. If you're willing and you're able, try to make a big snow angel. Yeah. <laughs> If you're excited when it snows, wave your arms. All right, let's do it one more time. We're going to sing If You're Happy When It Snows again. Here we go. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. Oh, it's fluffy and it's white. Such a lovely snowy sight. If you're happy when it snows, clap your hands. Okay, everyone. Now, before we read our first story, we're going to do our five finger breathing exercise. Uh, if you remember, we are going to breathe in 
while we go up our finger, we'll pause for a moment and then we will breathe out slowly and pause. Breathe in one more time and we're going to do that for all of our fingers. Alrighty, here we go. Breathe in and pause and breathe out. Then we'll breathe in pause and breathe out and breathe in and pause and breathe out and breathe in and pause and breathe out all right one more breathe in and pause and Breathe out. All right. All right, so now we are going to read our first book. It is called The Wish Tree, and it is by Keo McClear, and the pictures are by Chris Turnham. All right, here we go. Charles wanted to find a wish tree. His brother said, there is no such thing. His sister said, there is no such thing. But Charles said, what do you think, Boggin? I think he's talking to his toboggan, or the sled that you see right under the window there. And Boggin thought, surely there was such a thing. So the next morning, Charles and Boggin set forth. His brother said, bring a map. And his sister said, don't forget a compass. But Charles and Boggin were already well on their way into the woods. La dee da dee da dee da, sang Charles. Wish, sang Boggin. They had the whole day ahead of them the whole day to find a wish tree. Up, up to the top of a hill they climbed and down, down to a frosty meadow they slid where Charles went, Boggin followed and where Boggin went, Charles followed. Charles and Boggin did not see the wish tree but they did see Squirrel, who was puzzling over how to get some hazelnuts to his home. So we see Squirrel, he's sitting right there on that tree stump and he's surrounded by all these hazelnuts, but how is he gonna get them home? la dee da dee da dee da sang Charles. Whish, sang Boggin, and he told Squirrel, hold on tight. And he brought him all the way home so that he could get his hazelnuts squirreled away for the winter. So long, squirrel. Slow, slow through the snow they went, and hush, hush, past Bear's Den they crept. Where Charles went, Boggin followed, and where Boggin went, Charles followed. They did not see a wish tree anywhere, but they did see Beaver, who was busy gathering birch wood to bring to his lodge. Let's go, he said to Beaver. La di da di da di da, sang Charles. Whish, sang Boggin. And he brought him right up to his lodge where he was able to finish building his home. But bye bye, Beaver. Can we say bye, Beaver? Bye, Beaver. Slide, glide across the ice, they slipped past a few logs and around a bend. Where Charles went, Boggin followed. And where Boggin went, Charles followed. The wish tree was nowhere to be found, but they did find 
who is late getting berries to her burrow. Load em up, said Charles. la di da di da di da sang Charles. Whish, sang Boggin. And he helped Fox bring all the berries to her burrow. Keep warm, Fox. Do you see Fox and her little cubs? And there they are, eating the berries. Yum. Now they had less than half the day ahead of them. Less than half the day to find a wish tree. We may need to move a little faster, Boggin, said Charles. But here you can see Charles helped so many creatures. We have owl over here, and we have deer, and some yummy looking apples. And then we have some birds who probably needed some help getting these twigs back to their nest. And last but not least, what do we see here? That's right, we see some mice, and it looks like they are gathering some mushrooms. Yum. Charles and Boggin were moving very slowly now. Their shadows were growing longer. The whole day was almost behind them. Boggin, Charles said, I am tired. I cannot search any longer. He seems pretty sad right now. Shh, whispered Boggin. Who's that? When Charles awoke, it was snowing. It was snowing on squirrel, and it was snowing on beaver, and it was snowing on fox, and it was snowing on everyone. For a moment, Charles could not see through the falling snow. But then he said, oh, look, what do you think he saw? See, Boggin, said Charles, just as we thought. And Boggin said, wish. Charles wrote his wish on a piece of paper and tied it around a branch of the wish tree. Do you see it right there on the branch? I wonder what Charles wished for. What would you wish for? The snow was falling more gently now. The animals had prepared a night feast with hazelnut souffle, a pot of birch tea, and biscuits made of berries. That all sounds delicious. Charles and Boggin celebrated with their friends until it was time to be on their way. The moon was glowing brightly. La di da di da di da, sang Charles. Wish, sang Boggin, all the way home. The end. Now, I hope you guys like that story as much as I did. I think it is a beautiful tradition that maybe you can do at home as well. Alrighty, so next. Hello again, everybody. How are you doing? Did you enjoy the first half of our story time with Miss Jackie? That's great, that's great. Well, we've got even more fun in store here in the second half. We're going to read another excellent winter time story. But before we do, you know, I'm feeling a little bit chilly. How about you? Yeah, you know, it's a little cold today, and I think it'd be good to warm up, maybe with a little bit of a dance. And I just happen to have a perfect dance in mind for this story time. So what do you say? You want to dance it with me? You do? All right, excellent. Well, this dance goes a little something like this. Put your right glove in, you take your right glove out. Put your right glove in and you shake it all about. You do the snow pokey and you play the 
up and round. That's what it's all about. Now put your left glove in and take your left glove out. Put that left glove in and you shake it all about. You do the snooky pokey and then it's up and round. That's what it's all about. You put your scarf in, you take your scarf out. Put your scarf in and you shake it all about. You do the snooky pokey and you turn the stuff around. That's what it's all about. You put your right boot in, you take your right boot out. Put your right boot in and you shake it all about. You do the snooky pokey and you turn the stuff around. That's what it's all about. Now put your left boot in, take your left boot out. Put your left boot in and you shake it all about. You do the snooky pokey and you turn the stuff around. That's what it's all about. Now put your hat in and take your hat out. Put your hat on in and you shake it all about. You do the snooky pokey and you turn the stuff around. That's what it's all about. Now put your snow self in, take your snow self out. Put your snow self in, and you shake it all about. You do the snow pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Whew, well, I, for one, am certainly not cold anymore. In fact, it's a little hot in here, don't you think? Well, now that we're all warmed up, why don't we get to our story for this half? Do you and your family have a special holiday that you celebrate in the wintertime? Hmm. Did you know that there are lots of different holidays and other celebrations that people like to observe during winter? Well, it's true. And there are also some people who don't celebrate anything in particular during the winter. And you know what? All of that is great. In fact, it's awesome because all the different ways that people celebrate and don't celebrate things throughout the year are part of what make them unique and special. And a big part of what makes this world so exciting and fun to live in is the fact that people have so many different unique and special ways of living life and celebrating life. The book that we'll be reading for this half of the story time is about some of the different ways that people spend the winter. But even though they spend it in different ways, they're all still part of one caring community. This book is called Winter Candle. Winter Candle by Jaron Ashburn, illustrated by Stacy Schwett, read with permission of Creston Books. Nana Clover checked her list. Turkey, in the oven. Potatoes, peeled. Napkins, folded just so. Candles? How could she have forgotten? Thanksgiving at 3C Juniper Court without candles? Unheard of. Down she padded three flights to the super. Candles, Nana C? asked Trev. He opened a drawer and handed her a lumpy stick of wax. It's not pretty but it'll burn. Nana Clover spread some pine cones and leaves around the frumpy candle. By the time her Thanksgiving guests arrived, the centerpiece glowed. Two weeks later, 2G was in an uproar. The Havdala candle's not here, Nat yelled from the closet. In the kitchen, Mom sighed. Oh, I forgot to buy a new one. 
Avi's lip quivered. But the stars will be out soon. Sha, sha, it's not the end of the world, Grandpa told the Danziger children. Avi, go ask a neighbor for a candy. Up, Avi clattered and rapped on Nana Clover's door, and down he clumped with the bumpy, drooping candle. Avi's brothers stared. That's not a Havdala candle, Sam groaned. It's not braided. It only has one wick, Nat complained. It's not pretty, agreed Grandpa. But a candle is blessed by what it does, not by how it looks. It'll shine. And shine it did, as Mom raised it high. Grandpa said the blessing to end the Sabbath. Avi held his hands to the light. They'd never had a Havdalah candle that burned so bright. Four mornings later, it was 4D's turn for disaster. It's broken, Kirsten wailed. Liv came running. One, two, three, four candles on the St. Lucia crown, and the fifth one snapped in two. Our cousins will be here any minute, said Kirsten. How can I be St. Lucia with only four candles? Liv started to cry. No St. Lucia crown and no special St. Lucia breakfast. Girls, we have plenty of time, Mom reassured them. Kirsten, go ask a neighbor for another candle. Down Kirsten dashed two flights to the Danzigers and came back with the funniest looking candle the girls had ever seen. Everyone will laugh at me, moped Kirsten. But nobody laughed, because as Kirsten carried in the teapot and St. Lucia buns, the funny-looking candle gleamed as brightly as the star of Bethlehem. Winter came, snow fell, and presents were exchanged. The new year began, and in 5A, it began with calamity. Jamila's got something in her mouth, Dante hollered, and I don't think it's food. Dad scooped up the baby and stuck his finger in her mouth. A piece of wax, a bit of string. Oh no, Dante hollered. Jamila ate the faith candle for the Kinara. Go see if the Ericsons have one, his sister Monet suggested. Down the stairs, Dante plodded and knocked on the door. You're lucky. We still have this one, Kirsten said. She handed him the bedraggled little candle. But Dante didn't feel lucky. How could they talk about faith with that sorry thing? And it wasn't the right color. But when Dad lit the stubby candle, the flame leaped and danced, inviting the other six candles to do the same. A few days later came the biggest snowstorm of the season. Snow blanketed the front steps and made drifts on the window sills. Then, just after nightfall, the electricity went out. Flashlight beams flickered in a few windows. In 5B, the newest family at Juniper Court huddled together in the dark. Their clothes were still in suitcases. Their dishes were still in boxes. And Papa was somewhere in the city with a moving truck full of furniture. How will Papa find us? Nazreen asked. The street lights are out. Papa won't find us, cried Farouk. There's too much snow. Of course he will find us, Mama said. Nazreen, go next door and ask the neighbors for a candle. We'll put it in the window to light Papa's way. Next door, Dante scratched his head. 
I think there's one left from Kwanzaa, he told Nazreen. He returned with a lump of wax that looked like a fairy tale troll. Nazreen's mother lit the candle and set it on the windowsill. How's Papa going to see one little candle in such a big city? Farouk asked. But as they watched, the flames shimmered and grew. It glittered on the falling snowflakes until the dark street seemed spun with stars. Many blocks away, Papa slowly steered the big truck through snow-covered streets. What did that sign say? Pine Street? Vine Street? But then, Papa noticed a glow up ahead. Maybe someone there could give him directions. Papa steered left, then right, then left closer and closer to the glowing light. Papa turned a corner and gasped. There, in front of him, five stories up, shone a warm, welcoming light. He was home. Papa climbed three floors, four floors, five floors, and then, Papa's here! Nazreen and Farouk flew down the hall and into their father's arms. Come see our new house, Papa, cried Nazreen. And look, everyone else is coming too. The little apartment filled with neighbors. Dante's family brought chairs and a folding table. Nana Clover made a bed out of blankets for Nazreen and Farouk. Trev brought a small heater. The Erickson girls and their mother made sandwiches, and the Danzigers put a pot of soup to warm on the camping stove. Everyone welcomed Nazreen and Farouk and Mama and Papa to their new home. And the gnarled little candle glowed so brightly in the window that when the electricity finally did come back on, no one even noticed. The End Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. We're glad you came to play. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. We're glad you came to play. Bye, everyone.